Encountering life from another world can be a terrifying and deadly experience. Abductees claim to have been captured and experimented on. Encounters with extraterrestrials may have even unleashed some of mankind's most virulent scourges. What are extraterrestrials seeking here on Earth? Are they coming for our planet? Or are they coming for us? Join us as we confront the truth about alien encounters and discover why your first contact with extraterrestrial life could be your last on Unsealed Alien Files. A global effort has begun. Secret files hidden from the public for decades detailing every UFO account are now available to the public. We are about to uncover the truth behind these classified documents. Find out what the government doesn't want you to know. Unsealed Alien Files. Exposing the biggest secret on planet Earth. Alien encounters occur in every corner of the globe. Many occur at a distance. Glowing lights in the sky. A shadowy figure in the woods. But those who have experienced a close encounter have found it can have deadly consequences. The abduction phenomenon is at the furthest end of believability for most people, but it yields the most physical evidence. We're talking about things left behind, footprints, we're talking about scars, implants, all kinds of things. Dayton, Texas, December 29th, 1980. Betty Cash, Vicki Landrum, and her seven-year-old son Colby are driving on a lonely stretch of Texas highway. In the distance, above the approaching tree line, a light appears in the sky. The women stop the car, and all three get out to take a better look at what appears to be a diamond-shaped craft hovering above the trees. As the shock wears off, the three return to the car, but the door handle is too hot to touch. The craft suddenly emits a beam of light directly at the car, catching Betty Cash, Vicki Landrum, and her son Colby in its intense heat. The three are frozen with terror until a deafening sound splits the night air as military helicopters suddenly appear and chase the UFO off into the night. Almost immediately, the three victims of the UFO encounter begin to experience nausea, vomiting, weakness, and a burning sensation on their skin. Betty Cash suffers the worst, losing patches of hair and skin. She is admitted to the hospital on January 3rd, 1981, where she remains for 15 days. An examination by a radiologist determines the three were exposed to high doses of ionizing radiation. What was a UFO doing hovering over a desolate Texas forest? And why did it attack three people without provocation. Perhaps the most disturbing of all is the response by the American military. How could they have responded so quickly and with such force unless they were already prepared for just such an encounter? Amazingly, the Cash Landrum encounter is anything but an isolated incident. 4% of the world's population 280 million people claim to have not only encountered aliens, but many of those victims have experienced horrifying scenarios. Unsealed case file. The Travis Walton incident. Arizona, November 5th, 1975. Travis Walton is working on a logging crew in the forests of Arizona. After his shift ends, the crew are driving back to camp when a bright light is spotted just off the road, partially obscured by trees. As the crew approaches, a large silver disc, roughly 20 feet in diameter, can be seen as the source of the blinding white light. Walton and his fellow workers stop to investigate. It's a decision Travis Walton would come to regret for the rest of his life. The closer I got, uh, you know, and it wasn't, going anywhere and I was you know thinking about how foolish it was for me to be doing this but I was 
kind of showing off for the crew a little bit, and they were getting pretty excited and yelling at me to get back in the truck. When I got up to it, I was making this sort of a rocky motion. And right at that instant, something hit me. Next thing I knew, I was regaining consciousness, but I was in a lot of pain. I saw these forms over me, and when I finally got it into focus, I could see this creature looking at me, and uh, I just flipped out. You know, I looked around. There was three of them. The one that was closest to me, I, I tried to hit him. I, was, I could hardly move, and my arm felt real heavy, and I was weak. Somehow got the strength to get off of, off of the table. Travis was found several miles from the site of the abduction and could only recall a few hours of his close encounter. But even more disturbing is that five days had passed. Shortly after, he and his crew underwent a polygraph test. They were asked, did you tell the truth about seeing a UFO last Wednesday when Travis Walton disappeared? All answered yes. Travis Walton's encounter left him unscarred physically, but emotionally, he may never fully recover. Emotional shock is common among abductees. Their traumatic experience is often something that haunts them for the rest of their lives. Coming up, why are aliens abducting humans? And what horrifying evidence has been discovered when abductees return? This is Unsealed Alien Files, exposing the biggest secret on planet Earth. Welcome back to Unsealed Alien Files. Encounters with life forms from other worlds can be terrifying and deadly. Victims are often traumatized for life. But while psychological damage is common, some abductees exhibit disturbing physical damage. Victims are often taken when at their most vulnerable, asleep in bed. Mark Routley, a victim of multiple abductions, is no stranger to the horrifying experience. Suddenly, out of the blue, I woke up 3 o'clock in the morning, terrified, panic-stricken, paralyzed. I knew exactly what was going on. Three entities were in the room. I could see all around the room. I was completely coherent, completely awake, just immobile. With fear, I don't know whether they they did, they did something to make me immobile, I don't know. Routley claims one of the entities crossed the room walking like a normal human. But what happened next is the stuff of nightmares. Approached me at the bed and leant down right into my face. I entered another dimension of fear that I could not even begin to describe. It was like primal, raw. All else I remember is some kind of thing being drilled into my ear, and that was it. I was awake. It was 8, eight o'clock in the morning, and that was it. I had, I had that amount of missing time, about four or five hours missing. Don't know what happened. One moment he was alone, asleep in his bed, and the next, a vulnerable victim. They arrive. They immobilize you. You wake up, and you're already snared. That's it. And they take you, and you're gone. Nobody knows. Nobody bat an eyelid because everybody's asleep. Over a period of several years, the Roper Organization surveyed almost 6,000 adult Americans who claimed to have experienced alien abductions, many in the dead of night. The results, published in 1992, were deeply disturbing. Unsealed case file, the Roper Poll. The Roper Poll document states, these patients might also have dreams or vague remembrances of hospital operating rooms, bright lights, and huge-eyed alien beings. Careful questioning, especially under hypnosis, may reveal that these patients have specific memories of having been immobilized by impassive alien beings who remove them typically from a car or home and then transport them into a UFO. Physical damage extends beyond examination of the victim. An alarming number of abductees have discovered alien implants under their skin, inserted 
during these horrifying surgeries. These objects are small in size and metallic in nature. Often abductees are unaware of the presence of the implant until a routine scan for an unrelated ailment reveals a foreign object inside their bodies. Implants have been found in feet, hands, arms, and legs. But unbelievably, in many cases, there are no physical scars marking where the device was inserted into the body. Some victims remain awake through the entire procedure, and others have only vague recollections of what was done to them. Have these people been recruited into a long-term experiment against their will? What is the purpose of these implants? Symptoms associated with alien implants range from nosebleeds and migraine headaches to reproductive problems and repeated spells of missing time. Many victims are abducted multiple times, forced to endure strange and painful experiments. What would an extraterrestrial hope to gain from these procedures? American Dr. Roger Lear is one of the few experts in the field of alien implants. Lear's discoveries have stunned the scientific world. The size of the implants, uh, the largest one that I've taken out uh, was about uh, a full sonometer by a sonometer. It was a T-shaped object. In the 16 cases that we have uh, performed for the removal of these objects, we have never seen one case in which there was an evident uh, portal of entry or means of which it penetrated the body. Laboratory tests of these implants reveal startling findings. Many of these objects allegedly contain radioactive isotopes that match meteorite fragments, leading experts to chillingly conclude the objects are not of this Earth. There are still many unanswered questions about the nature and origin of alien implants. Are implants tracking devices, or do they serve an even darker purpose? Many ufologists believe understanding the reason behind these implants may be the key to understanding why extraterrestrial life could be interested in our planet. Coming up, could victims of alien abduction become weapons designed to bring humanity to its knees? This is Unsealed Alien Files, exposing the biggest secret on planet Earth. Welcome back to Unsealed alien files. H.G. Wells's book, War of the Worlds, is a tale of the invasion of Earth by a race of aliens from Mars. In the end, the salvation of mankind is a small virus. The Martians have no immunity to the common cold, and so the destruction of the human race is prevented by a simple microorganism. But the same principle could also be applied in reverse. Are abductees returned to Earth carrying more than just a metal implant? If alien life is coming to Earth on a mission of war and not peace, the easiest and most effective way to attack might be using disease as a weapon. Infecting an abductee with a virus is not a complex process. Human biological warfare goes back hundreds of years. In 1763, one of the first recorded uses of bio-warfare occurred in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. After a conflict between Aboriginal warriors and British troops, the British dispatched a small group of emissaries with blankets as a sinister gift of peace. The journal of a local trader records, we gave them two blankets and a handkerchief out of the smallpox hospital. I hope it will have the desired effect. The disease proved almost unstoppable among the Aboriginal people. Waves of smallpox epidemics killed untold numbers. If humans could deploy disease as a weapon, what could a scientifically superior alien agenda unleash? If an alien race really did want to deliver some type of biological agent or a virus to the planet Earth, they could easily do it. All they would have to do is find some type of delivery method, and they wouldn't even have to visit the planet itself. 
We've had at least two documented cases where a meteorite has crashed on the surface of Earth and brought with it something else, like a virus or a bacteria that we couldn't explain. Many diseases that have ravaged the world have seemingly come from nowhere. H1N1, SARS, polio, HIV, and AIDS appear suddenly and spread across the Earth, devastating the population. Do these and other virus strains share a common, unearthly point of origin? Was this unidentifiable bacteria an attempt to introduce a deadly disease here on Earth? Not all of these attempts occur in secret. A famous UFO sighting witnessed by thousands may have triggered one of the deadliest diseases in modern history. Unsealed case file, Fatima, Portugal. Well over 100 years ago, there was an apparition and the religious belief that it was the Virgin Mary. The Virgin Mary gave a number of prophecies to three little girls. These little girls kept the secret of what those prophecies were all the way into the 20, 20th century. And this is a UFO theory that the Fatima, the vision that appeared in Portugal, was actually not the Holy Mother, the Blessed Virgin. That creature was an extraterrestrial imparting prophecies about the future to believers who were there Witnesses described the event as though the sun had become a kaleidoscope of colors, an ever-shifting pattern in the sky. And on several occasions during the mass sighting, as the crowd stood in awe, clouds pounded onlookers with a torrential downpour of rain. For several days, the local media headlines read, The Miracle at Fatima. Then in January 1918, just three months after the last sighting at Fatima, the world was infected by one of the deadliest plagues in history, the Spanish flu. It is said to have claimed over 500 million victims, ravaging an estimated 5% of the world's population. Were the rains at Fatima a method of transmitting a deadly extraterrestrial virus to the Earth? Coming up, have aliens managed to turn the very planet we call home into a weapon that could destroy all life on Earth? This is Unsealed Alien Files, exposing the biggest secret on planet Earth. Welcome back to Unsealed Alien Files. The time to act is now. Tell us your story. Get involved in the fight to unseal the truth now. Fatal encounters with alien life could be growing in scale. Extraterrestrials may be attacking the Earth from great distances, effectively removing the need for face-to-face -face combat. By bombarding the planet from a safe distance with meteor fragments containing microorganisms, an alien attack could occur without our knowledge. Evidence may also exist that alien technology could control the very environment in which we live. Are extraterrestrials powerful enough to turn other ecosystems on our planet into a weapon against us? There is so much evidence that our world is in decline. We have strange weather patterns, polar shifts. I mean, it's obvious that we are one step away from total destruction. Are alien life forms preparing to destroy all life on this planet? UFO sightings are commonly reported at areas just before natural disasters occur. UFO experts claim sightings increased in the months and weeks leading up to the 2011 earthquake and tsunami that brought the island of Japan to the brink of an uncontrollable nuclear disaster. Do these incidents reveal a darker purpose to alien activity on Earth? And is there any way we can survive if even Mother Nature is at the mercy of alien control? This is Unsealed Alien Files, exposing the biggest secret on planet Earth.